This is devotional number 323, and today's date is September 6, 2017. We're looking at Romans 12, 2 this week, and I'll read that. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Today I'd like us to take a look at this phrase, by the renewing of your mind. The Greek word translated here as renewing is Strong's number 342. And it's also found in Titus 3.5. And we read there, not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost. We immediately recognize that God's mercy and righteousness are at work here. Uh, without any human effort whatsoever, it's all based upon the faith and the work of the Lord Jesus Christ, of course, during the day of salvation. The same Greek word for uh, washing that we find here in Titus 3.5 is also found in Ephesians 5.26 that he might sanctify and cleanse it, this is the eternal church, all the elect, with the washing of water by the word. And this term washing has to do with the washing of away of one's sins by the water of the word of God, uh, which is the entire Bible. And it is the, the words of the Bible during the day of salvation that performed the action uh, of salvation. That's why we have a, a verse like Romans 10, 17. It says, faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. We also find this highlighted in the Old Testament in Ezekiel 36, 25, a beautiful passage where we read, then will I sprinkle clean water upon you and ye shall be clean from all your filthiness and from all your idols will I cleanse you. So we see that the renewing of the Holy Ghost has everything to do with salvation during the day of salvation and God the Holy Spirit took up residency in the newly regenerated soul that had been previously spiritually dead. Uh, he did this all throughout the day of salvation uh, according to each of his elect. When he determined the proper time and season when he would save them at some point uh, during their physical lifetime. John 3, 5 affirms the same truth. Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, and this is speaking um, to Nicodemus, except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. The word renewing in Romans 12, 2 uh, stems from another uh, Greek word that is translated as renewed uh, in these following passages. And this other Greek word is Strong's 3, 41. We read in 2 Corinthians 4, 16, For which cause we faint not, but though our outward man perish, yet the inward man is renewed day by day. We see this also in Colossians 3, 9 through 11, where it speaks about the old man and the new man. Lie not one to another, seeing that ye have put off the old man with his deeds, and have put on the new man, which is renewed in knowledge, after the image of him that created him, where there is neither Greek nor Jew, circumcision nor uncircumcision, 
barbarian, Scythian, bond, nor free, but Christ is all and in all. The Greek word for inward man in 2 Corinthians 4.16 has to do with the state of our soul. Or figuratively, it's, um, we also find it rendered as heart. Uh, and it's uh, twice in Matthew, I'm sorry, in Mark 7, 21 to 23, it's translated as within. For from within, out of the heart of men, proceed evil thoughts, adulteries, fornications, murders, thefts, covetousness, wickedness, deceit, lasciviousness, an evil eye, blasphemy, pride, foolishness. All these evil things come from within and defile the man. The Greek word for renewed, uh, 341, is also a derivative of the word rendered as new, uh, 2537, in a number of passages in the New Testament and it really illustrates the wonderful new spiritual life made possible by the grace of God and the faith of the Lord Jesus Christ with regard to each of his elect. Uh, we read in 2 Corinthians 5.17, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature or creation. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Naturally, new life is God's specialty, both in creation as well as in salvation, which we could term as recreation, because he is the supreme author of not only physical but spiritual life as well. And you might recall the majestic statement that the Lord Jesus uttered in Matthew 22, 31 to 33, in which he quoted Exodus 3, 6. But as touching the resurrection of the dead, have ye not read that which was spoken unto you by God, saying, I am the God of Abraham, and the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob? God is not the God of the dead, but of the living. And when the multitude heard this, they were astonished at his doctrine. Galatians 6.15 emphasizes this as well. For in Christ Jesus neither circumcision availeth anything nor uncircumcision, but a new creature or creation. This passage is making the crucial point that physical circumcision is irrelevant with respect to salvation. It does not matter whether one is physically circumcised, as were the Old Testament Jews, or uncircumcised, as were the Gentiles or the other non-Jewish nations. What is actually of substance and of value is whether one has been born again or born from above during the day of salvation, and 1 Peter 1.23 affirms this superlative spiritual truth, being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible, by the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. And if we turn to Ephesians 4.22-24, we read that you put off concerning the former conduct or conversation, the old man, which is corrupt, according to the deceitful lusts, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind, and that you put on the new man, which after Christ, excuse me, which after God, is created in righteousness and true holiness. The Greek word for mind is Strong's number 3563 in Romans 12, 2, and it appears 24 times in the Old Testament. An example of its usage can be seen in Luke 24, 45, where it is translated as understanding, as the master dealt with the two men on the road to Emmaus. 
then opened he their understanding that they might understand the scriptures.